Welcome to PT Dan's instructional videos. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to burn fat at a very efficient rate. Before you can burn fat at a very efficient rate, you need to know how your body works. So let's have a quick look at how our body works. The first thing we need to be talking about is metabolism. Your basal metabolic rate is established by your muscularity. You see, a big car burns more fuel than a little car simply because it's bigger. It demands more fuel. So the more muscularity you have, the more calories your body burns at rest. This is what we call your basal metabolic rate. So if your muscle is what burns calories, and that's your engine in your car, what's your fuel source? If you think your body burns fat directly, you're actually incorrect. Your body does not directly burn fat. Your body's fuel source is sugar. In fact, everything that you eat all gets converted to sugar to be used by fuel by your muscle tissue. So your muscle tissue burns sugar. If your muscle tissue burns sugar, what's fat got to do with anything? Well, you're actually born and you die with the same amount of fat cells. This isn't directly how your body works specifically. For you, you people in the medical industry and, and doctors out there, I can see where you're coming from. Um, but the reason why I'm speaking to you in this way is because I'm trying to make a very complex situation as simple as possible. So simply put as possible, let's have a look at it this way. It's your liver's job to take fat and break it down into sugar to be used by your muscle tissue. So it's your job, liver's job to take fat, break it down into sugar, and now your muscle tissue burns sugar. So if that's the case, what happens is this. When you start exercising, the first fuel source your body goes for is the sugar free floating and currently available in your bloodstream. Once there's no sugar left in your blood, now what happens is that your liver now starts functioning more efficiently and now starts breaking down fat at a faster speed to supply enough sugar for your muscle tissue to use during exercise. So you first start burning sugar in your blood and then your body starts breaking down fat into sugar to use. So this is where our body starts going into its stored fuel source and starts burning fat. Where does your body start burning fat? When there's simply no sugar left in your blood. So it goes for the sugar first in your bloodstream and then it starts breaking down fat into sugar to be used as fuel. The simple theory is this. If your body burns fat and it burns sugar from your blood, if you simply take away the sugar from your blood, your body's got no choice but to burn fat. It'll break down fat into sugar to be used as a fuel source. So if this is the case, your, where else does your body get sugar from? That's right, food. So your body either gets sugar from food or it gets sugar from your fat cells. So if you want your body to start burning sugar from your fat, what you need to do is stop giving your body sugar from its food. This sugar from food incorporates carbohydrates. All type of carbohydrates, if not used, gets converted back into fat. So if you get all this food coming in this way, your body's going to use the sugar from the food. Because when you eat food, that goes straight into your blood supply. And remember what we said before, your body burns sugar from your blood supply first. So when you eat, you put the sugar directly into your bloodstream and your body uses that sugar. If you put too much sugar into your bloodstream from your food and you eat too much raw sugars like chocolate or if you eat too much carbohydrates, and if there's too much sugar free-floating inside just your bloodstream, what your body does is it will now take that sugar and convert it back into its fat cells and now your fat cells get bigger and bigger and bigger and we start looking more and more and more overweight. 
So that overweight simply comes from excess sugar that goes into your from, into your bloodstream from your food, and that gets converted back into stored sugar in your fat cells. So if we want to burn sugar from our fat cells instead of the sugar from our food, all we have to do is get rid of our carbohydrates. However, there is a problem with that. Your body does demand sugar and carbohydrates at two, specifically two specific times of the day. Your body does need sugar ASAP first thing in the morning because you have slept all night and you haven't eaten. So you wake up first thing in the morning with your sugar levels bottomed out, unless of course you're a diabetic, where you may wake up in the morning with the sugar levels a little elevated. However, for most of us, we wake up first thing in the morning with no sugar in our blood, so we do need to have a high carbohydrate breakfast just to get our sugar levels and energy levels back to normal. This is why instinctively, for breakfast, we love to eat foods such as cereals, toast, fruit. All these foods happen to be very high in carbohydrates. We also need to exercise, so straight after we exercise and we use our muscle tissue, when we use our muscle tissue, our muscle tissue burns sugar as a fuel source, so our sugar levels are completely depleted after exercise. So after exercise, we also need to have a lot of carbohydrates just to get our sugar levels back to normal again. So the deal is this, cut carbs completely except for ASAP first thing in the morning and straight after you exercise. That's what we need to do. Because if we stop the food from coming in, our body will now burn sugar directly from its fat cells and now we start to lose weight. So now that we understand this, what's, can, what, are, what are the things that can slow this system down? What can slow this system down is this. Toxins are simply things that go into our body that's not supposed to be there. The World Health Organization has listed about 2.2 million different types of toxins that affect every human being on a daily basis. These toxins are things such as artificial sweeteners, colorings, additives, sweeteners, and preservatives. It also comes from the things we put in our skin, such as shampoo, soaps, conditioners, etc., etc., deodorant that we spray directly onto our bodies. Anything that we put on our skin actually gets absorbed by our bodies. We also have things such as stress levels, cortisol, internal hormones that get produced, lactic acid, all these types of things like internal natural toxins. Pollution in the air, cigarette smoke that we breathe, all these toxins that we put into our body has and does a lot of damage and this is why. These toxins have what we call a negative charge. The fat cells have a positive that simply means that our toxics, toxins in our body and our fat cells are actually attracted to each other like a magnet. And what happens is, all these toxins get stuck around the outside of our fat cells. And when they get stuck to the outside of our fat cells, our fat cells try and break down for fuel, or our liver tries to release sugar from them, but they can't because that toxic waste is holding it all together. This is why we find it more difficult to lose weight later on in life in comparison to how we are when we're young. Because as we spend more time on Earth, our bodies fill up with more and more toxins and our fat cells become more and more damaged. So when that happens, our body finds it difficult to break down sugar to be released as a fuel source. This means we can't get sugar from our fat cells anymore. And this is why we start to crave carbohydrates. We start to want to eat sugars. We start to demand it. Because your brain knows if you can't get sugar from your fat cells, it must get it from somewhere else. And this is where, again, it starts to demand food high in carbohydrates. This also happens with pregnant women. When pregnant people go through this stage, this is where the body builds up a lot of natural toxins in order to create a child. And this is why they're not getting enough sugar to be supplied to the muscle tissue, so they start to crave carbohydrates during pregnancy. So now that we understand how our body works, what do we need to do to start burning fat? Well, the first thing we need to do is clean your fat cells. How are you expected to burn fat if your fat cells aren't even available for fuel in the first place? 
So what we need to do is clean our fat cells. Once we've cleaned our fat cells, now we've got enough fat to be broken down as sugar for your muscle tissue. The second thing we need to do, cut your carbs, except for breakfast and ASAP after workouts. This is when your body needs carbohydrates, just to get your sugar levels back to normal again. Here comes the big one. Cardio versus weight training. If your muscle tissue is what burns fat, don't you think it's important to get as much muscularity as you can? I think so. And this is why resistance training plays a very large role. When you do a lot of weight training, as the months go on, you are gaining more and more muscle tissue. Now your body's demanding more and more calories, and you're capable of burning more fat at a faster speed. When you do cardio, your body actually goes backwards. What happens is this. Your body tries to break down fat into sugar to be used by your muscle tissue when you're doing cardiovascular workouts because you need to have a fuel source. But because your heart rate is so high, there's such a massive demand for energy that your body's liver can't break down fat at a fast enough speed to supply your muscle tissue with adequate amount of sugar. So your body actually takes your muscle tissue, your liver breaks down your muscle tissue into sugar that now gets used by your body. So you're actually eating yourself to survive. How can we prove this? Well, have a look at long distance runners, marathon runners. They're not skinny just because they've got no body fat. They're skinny because they've got no muscle tissue. It's because they run for such a long period of time, their bodies are continuously eating themselves apart. If you start eating your muscle tissue, what's happening to your metabolism? Is it going up as the years go on? Or does it actually start going backwards? It actually starts going backwards. So if you do a lot of cardio, the speed at which you're capable of burning fat as the months go on actually slows down. Whereas if you do a lot of resistance training, the speed at which your body's capable of burning fat speeds up. I think that's a pretty good theory. I think it's a pretty good way to burn fat. This is how we do it at PT Den, and this is how you should be doing it too.